NASA and Boeing finally found the root cause of the issues on the Boeing Starliner during its flight in early June. To be honest, the result is not optimistic, given that a key element could not be fixed in this mission. As a result, the big egos of the officials had to be lowered, and SpaceX Dragon was called in to help. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. Under pressure from public opinion, NASA ultimately acknowledged that SpaceX Crew Dragon could be a lifeboat for Boeing Starliner spacecraft stuck in space. Indeed, this is part of NASA's recent moves to prepare for the failure of the Starliner CFT mission during descent. They are now reviewing the backup options, including using other capsules to get the astronauts home safely. And this is the top priority. There's one Crew Dragon currently docked at the station, and another one is slated to launch with a fresh crew next month. Steve Stitch, the manager of NASA's commercial crew program, mentioned that the team has dusted off plans originally developed when the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, which carried NASA astronaut Frank Rubio to the International Space Station, developed a coolant leak. This mission is known as Soyuz MS-22. The preliminary plans were drawn up to potentially bring NASA astronaut Frank Rubio down on a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule, if necessary. However, the Russians launched a replacement Soyuz spacecraft, and these plans were not needed. Rubio and his crewmates, Russian cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Petalin, as a result, had to stay in orbit for several more months until they returned to Earth on the new Soyuz spacecraft. We decided to use Dragon as a contingency return option for Frank to use it as a lifeboat, Stitch said. We had a configuration of Frank in the mid-deck of Dragon. I mean, certainly we've dusted off a few of those things to look at relative to Starliner just to be prepared. But again, our prime option is to return Butch on SUNY on Starliner. We're pretty far away from where we were with the Soyuz. We just want to understand the thrusters a little bit more before we commit to the final undock and return. However, when asked about when the NASA astronaut duo would return home, no official return date has been given so far. According to Starliner updates, a landing date for the Starliner crew flight test will be scheduled following the flight test readiness review planned for later next week, while landing opportunities are available throughout August. Test pilots Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams first departed for the station roughly seven weeks ago in early June on a test mission that was meant to last about a week. However, the capsule's undocking was delayed because of faulty thrusters and small helium leaks that raised safety concerns. The pair have been in space for 52 days, six weeks longer than originally planned, and given the current situation, they will likely stay much longer. Why should we admit it? In the press conference on Thursday morning, NASA and Boeing officials said engineers continued to conduct a series of relevant tests. Obviously, we don't know when it will all end. This weekend, 27 of 28 RCS thrusters will be fired to check their performance while docked at the space station under a test serving as icing on the cake. The team wants to verify the performance of thrusters, similar to what would be done during future missions. The team also wants another helium leak data point, which has remained stable since the spacecraft's arrival at the station on June 6. The helium system has been closed for most of the time while docked to the station, so no helium is leaking in that configuration. Our mission was to get the crew to the ISS, and that has been completed. Our mission was to learn from a flight test. Now it's time to focus on returning the crew safely, Mark Nappy, Starliner Program Manager and Vice President, added. While the team developed the forward plan, they also continued standard spacecraft work and system checkouts of the docked Starliner. I think we're starting to close in on those final pieces of flight rationale to make sure that we can come home safely, and that's our primary focus right now, NASA's Stitch said. The test follows the pass-ground test, and with a reaction control system, RCS, thruster complete, and disassembly and inspections concluding, the Starliner team is reviewing data that will aid in future missions and pave the way for NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to return to Earth. On top of that, the test may help them understand the issue's root cause by analyzing a version of the Starliner's service module that's been sitting in White Sands, New Mexico, for three years. The helium leaks may be caused by Teflon seals in an oxidizer valve bulge, restricting the flow of nitrogen tetroxide propellant. A poppet valve, similar to an inflation valve on a tire, is designed to open and close to control the flow of propellants into the thruster combustion chamber. 
The seals have become degraded because of exposure to propellant vapor under heat, building up inside the thrusters. That poppet has a Teflon seal at the end of it, Nappy said. Through the heating and natural vacuum that occurs with the thruster firing, that poppet seal was deformed and actually bulged out a little bit. The thruster overheating problem is deemed to be due to two main reasons, sunlight and the thermos effect of the entire doghouse. The rear-facing thrusters are exposed to more sunlight as Starliner orbits the Earth. In addition, there are seven thrusters in each doghouse of the spacecraft. And to put it simply, each thruster generates heat, and the combination of seven will create the thermos effect, leading to the thruster degradation. So how do they solve it? The key point is whether the seal could remain intact through the undocking and deorbit burn of the Starliner spacecraft. The thrusters aren't needed while Starliner is attached to the space station. Could that particular seal survive the rest of the flight? That's the important part, Stitch said. The team tried to evaluate the integrity of the degraded seal by firing the thruster on the ground five times more than it would need to fire for Starliner to return to Earth. The good news is it remained intact. However, that doesn't mean the astronauts can manually fly the Starliner spacecraft on the way home, as they did briefly during the trip to the ISS. The spacecraft will fly in an automated mode instead. Some of the manual maneuvering put some extra stress on the thrusters, said Steve Stitch. Out of an abundance of caution, the hot firing test this weekend will be conducted, and if it shows a good result, there will be a flight readiness review at the end of next week to discuss the health of the Starliner spacecraft. And if plans are signed, the vehicle would bring two astronauts home as early as early August, ahead of SpaceX's next Crew Dragon mission launch, scheduled no earlier than August 18th. Or if worst comes to worst, possibly a rescue mission on Dragon will be come up with. This means that the pressure on the next test is huge. For future Starliner missions, first of all, NASA and Boeing have to deal thoroughly with the issue's root cause of Starliner, overheating. The natural fix to that is to just change that seal out to a material that's not so susceptible to being worn down by exposure to the propellant, Noppy said, referring to possible changes Boeing can make for future Starliner missions. But this is not the only available option. Boeing and its propulsion supplier, Aerojet Rocketdyne, may need to modify the thruster design. Another option is to change insulation on the doghouses or by software adjustments to fire the thrusters less often. Everything takes time, and it explains why the fourth Starliner flight, the first operational mission, will be slipped from next February to August to give more time for reviews after the CFT mission. This leaves the February launch window for Dragon Crew 10. Prior to Crew 10, the Crew Dragon Crew 9 mission with astronauts is scheduled to launch to the International Space Station no earlier than August 18th this year, perhaps becoming the final NASA-led ISS mission to arrive in the Atlantic Ocean aboard Crew Dragon. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.